Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What's up, guys? Another reaction video today. We are doing... I got, like, three suggestions for ep uh, Epic History videos. Seems like a great channel. We are going to do it. We This one is suggested by... I'm going to put... You, got, Ger, you guys are killing me with these names. Ger, Gertois? Gertois? I like Gertois. But, uh... Uh, overall, if you're on this, uh, sorry, if you're dizzy, close your eyes for a sec. Alrighty, that thing over there, you can see him on the uh, right over there. I did that a while ago, probably sub 40 subs, sub, sub like below 40 or 50 subs. So I got to um, do this reaction video, especially if you've been supporting me for that long. So thank you. Um, again, if you guys want to tell me how to actually pronounce these names, I will do them correctly, but let's get into it. Alexander the Great, part one. It seems to be a very, um, I, I love geography. Um, I love learning about geography. I love maps, cartography. I kind of always have a map here in the background. You guys probably noticed like in the, up there. Um, you can't see it. What am I talking about? But, uh, if it's kind of a map oriented way of showing history kind of like uh that there's this thing on tv sometimes called uh world war ii from space it's a really cool way of learning about uh some conflict and this is alexander the great this is pre rome stuff and very my knowledge is very it's not very sound as you go further and further back here and so i love to learn more about it i want my ultimate goal is to be able to Take all these videos and and be able to think about history for like four thousand years and be able to kind of know what's going on for every few centuries throughout the whole thing that'd be awesome let's get into it alexander the great part one original video down at the top of the description like always go check them out like and subscribe please uh to both them and me if you couldn't hit the bell icon to see when my next video comes out leave recommendations yada yada let's do it let's go in 334 BC, Alexander, King of Macedonia, began one of the greatest military campaigns in history against the superpower of the age, the Persian Empire. Okay. Just 20 years old, his brilliant and fearless leadership won him battle after battle. And in an astonishing 10-year campaign that took him to the edge of the known world, he carved out one of the largest empires ever known. Few men have had such a massive impact on the course of history. To the Persians, he was Alexander the Accursed. But to the West, he was immortalized as Alexander the Great. Ooh, look at that. That painting. And Invicta? Invicta. Also great. I did a reaction to uh, one of them. Go check it out. Please. From around 500 Ancient. BC, this rugged land was the scene of remarkable developments in art, philosophy, and warfare. Its two greatest city-states were Athens, a naval power where democracy, art, drama, and philosophy flourished and Sparta, an austere, militaristic society famed for its formidable army. In 480 BC, these two city-states had joined forces to fight an invasion by the mighty Persian Empire. At the narrow pass of Thermopylae, a small Greek force led by 300 Spartans held up the enormous Persian army for three days before they about were finally encircled all I know about killed. this then and from a video that that didn't seem extremely uh documentary esque documentary like in the Straits of Salamis the Greek fleet defeated the Persian Navy whoa sorry killed. yeah we're killed they were finally I gotta stop pausing so much and killed then, in the Straits of Salamis, the Greek fleet defeated the Persian navy. But they couldn't prevent the Persians burning the sacred temples of the Athenian Acropolis. 
the next year at Plataea, the Greeks won a decisive land battle against the Persians and forced them to abandon their invasion. The next 50 years were the golden age of classical Greece. But rising tension between Athens and Sparta and their allies eventually led to war, dragging the Greek world into decades of destructive fighting. Wars between the Greek city-states continued for almost a century, leaving them exhausted and vulnerable to a new rising power to the north. For centuries, sophisticated Greeks had viewed the mountainous kingdom of Macedonia as a backwater, Hicksville, barely Greek at all. But under King Philip II, Macedonia emerged as a what? backwater, Hicksville, Hicksville, barely Greek at all. Hicksville. But under King Philip II, Macedonia emerged as a formidable military force. His most famous reform? The introduction of the Sarissa, an 18-foot pike, twice the length of a normal Greek spear, and wielded by trained infantry, fighting in close formation, known as a phalanx. I might be pausing right before my, my, I get my answer, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they don't have it. But it, I almost can't imagine having a better weapon than that. It's just that, what do you do if you, you don't, have if like they get a little bit closer than the end like you you hit someone or you miss or like you hit someone and there's another guy like what do you do when like they're, they're right here do you kind of like or maybe they have like a little knife on the side or maybe they just didn't have any, anything else awesome video BC at the thank you for recommending this channel i love it already it reminds you kind of artemis i think is the one the history of Roman 20 minutes. Battle of Chironia, Philip's army crushed the joint forces of Thebes and Athens. Through alliance and conquest, Philip had already gained control over most of his neighbors. Now, following this victory, he united all Greece in an alliance known as the Hellenic League, or League of Corinth, with Philip as hegemon or supreme commander. Only Sparta stood aside. Philip began to plan a great campaign, a pan-Hellenic or all-Greek war against the Persian Empire. Their old foe was now an ailing superpower, its great riches ripe for the taking. But on the eve of launching his war, Philip was assassinated by his own bodyguard, victim of Macedonia's brutal court rivalries. He was succeeded by his 20-year-old son, Alexander, brilliant, restless, tutored by the great philosopher Aristotle and already an experienced military commander. Alexander inherited his father's grand plan to invade Persia but first he had to secure and wasn't aristotle tutored by plato or am i incorrect there for his own position as king at home he had potential rivals executed then crushed rebellions in illyria thessaly and central greece he made a special example of thebes completely destroying the ancient city and selling its people into slavery in the spring of 334 BC, now ready to launch his war against the Persian Empire, Alexander led his army across the Hellespont into Asia Minor. It was the start of one of the greatest military campaigns in history. Sorry. It was the start of one of the greatest military campaigns Alexander led his army across the Hellespont into Asia Minor. It was the start of one of the greatest military campaigns in history. Right, just let me make sure my... 
Feel good. Alrighty. Macedonian army. Alexander's army was about 40,000 strong, drawn from all parts of Greece. The infantry were commanded by the veteran Macedonian general Parmenion. In the front rank, 9,000 Macedonian phalangites armed with the 18-foot Sarissa. These were professional soldiers, well-trained and drilled, who formed up for battle in the phalanx, 16 ranks deep. This packed formation presented a solid wall of iron spear tips and was virtually unstoppable. But it was also difficult to maneuver. If anyone knows if, if any of these guys have any other weapon other than just that spear, because, if you could leave it down in the comments, because how, what do you do if, you, if someone gets too close? I mean, you, you, know, you, you know what I mean. And highly vulnerable to attacks on its flanks or rear. So 3,000 elite infantry, the hypaspists, or shield bearers, armed with shorter spears, guarded its flanks. They were commanded by Parmenion's son, Nicanor. Great, answering my the questions. The second line of Alexander's army was made up of 7,000 Greek allies and 5,000 mercenaries, armed as hoplites. They took their name from the hoplon, their large round shield, and carried shorter eight-foot spears. A hoplite phalanx was not as effective as the Macedonian phalangites, but still well armed and heavily armoured for the time. The Agrianes were the army's elite skirmishers, expert javelin throwers from what's now southern Very Bulgaria. Light armor. Other skirmishers from Thrace and Illyria were armed with javelins, slings, and bows. Where are these the animations? The troops of Alexander's army were the companion cavalry. 1,800 elite horsemen, armed with spear and sword, commanded by Philotas, another son of Parmenion. Alexander led the royal squadron in person. There were also 1,800 cavalry from Thessaly, commanded by Callas. 600 from other parts of Greece, led by Erigius. And 900 mounted scouts from Thrace and Paeonia, under Cassander. The Granicus. Well, what is with that helmet, man? The great Persian Empire was divided into provinces called satrapies. Each satrapy was ruled by a governor or satrap. Those in Asia Minor now threatened by... How big are the mountains in here? Can you see my cursor? Um... Like, see this mountain range right here? And all these? I wonder how tall these are. Because it, it doesn't really matter what your population is, you know, over here. If you can't get them over there and... Those in Asia Minor, now threatened by Alexander's invasion, met to discuss strategy. Memnon of Rhodes, a skilled Greek general in Persian service, urged them to avoid battle with Alexander. Instead, he advised them to use a scorched earth strategy, to burn villages and crops and withdraw to the interior. Very common. Alexander's army, he promised, would quickly starve. It was... Uh, the ones I'm thinking of right away are China and, I mean, China... Took it to a whole new level, but uh, st um, uh, uh, the, the Russians, uh, USSR in World War II, when Hitler was going through, it, it sounds terrible. You know, it's awful in you know ruining people's homes and everything, and 
a lot of people might die in the process, but it's sometimes it's it's the only move to keep them from getting to the you know your capital or whatnot. And then China Mao took it to a whole new level with the uh, flood, like the Yellow River flood that ended up killing like some crazy amount, like up to a million people or maybe like five hundred thousand. I'm not exactly sure. A lot of people, hundreds of thousands at the least. And uh, so sometimes that's necessary tactic. It was good advice, but the satraps were unwilling to lay waste to their own provinces without a fight. So they decided to face Alexander's army at the river Granicus. The a plus on this um, behind the river. suggestion, guys. Thank you but 60 feet wide with uh, steep banks. Add. Oh, Angelina Jolie, still looking good. With relapsing forms of MS, there's a lot to deal with. Not just unpredictable relapses. Okay. Hello, but 60 feet wide with steep banks. Their front line was a wall of cavalry, about 10,000 horsemen from across the empire. Medes and Hyrcanians from modern Iran, Bactrians from Afghanistan, and Paphlagonians from Turkey's Black Sea coast. Behind, in reserve, were the infantry, several thousand Greek mercenaries. So cool to roll that um, terrain and geography and, and uh, you know, river systems and deserts and mountains and whatnot uh, play in, in war. Uh, so interesting. A common sight in Persian armies at this time. These men fought for Persian gold and were armed with the round shield and short spear of so hoplites. Did, did they get him in Greece or the did the Persians may have Greece... been unsure if they could trust these men in combat against right. fellow Greeks? How did you even come across? Like, did, did you like, like, were they live? Were these Greek mercenaries living in the Persian Empire or? and so placed them at the rear. Alexander, determined to attack and destroy this Persian force before it could retreat, raced to the Granicus with his best troops. On his left wing, he posted Thessalian, Greek, and Thracian cavalry under Parmenian's command. In the center were the massed spears of the phalanx, its six divisions commanded by Perdiccas, Koinos, Amintas, Philip, Meliager, and Crateros. On the right, Alexander himself with the companion cavalry under Philotas, as well as the elite hypaspists, the Agrianes javelin throwers, and the archers. Alexander with 13,000 infantry and 5,000 cavalry in all, was probably slightly outnumbered. But ignoring advice to wait until dawn to cross the river, he ordered an immediate assault. He sent a squadron of companion cavalry to ford the river, followed by a regiment of hypaspists and the Paeonian light cavalry. Alexander, calling on his men to show their courage, then led his right wing across the river. Oh, it's that shallow right there. As they reached the middle of the river, the Greeks came under a hail of javelins, darts, and arrows from the Persian line. Those that made it to the far bank were immediately charged by the Persian cavalry. Alexander was in the thick of the fighting. He attacked where the whole mass of their cavalry and leaders were stationed. Around him, a desperate conflict raged. Horses were jammed against horses, and men against men. The Macedonians striving to drive the Persians away from the riverbank. The Persians determined to prevent them crossing, and to push them back into the river. Where are these animations? Seemed reckless. 
but he was buying time for the rest of his army to cross the river, including the irresistible Macedonian phalanx. Then, suddenly, Alexander was fighting for his life, charged by two Persian nobles. Roissasses rode up to Alexander and struck him on the head with his sword, breaking off a piece of his helmet. But the helmet broke the force of the blow, and Alexander struck him down with his lance. Then, from behind, Spithridates raised his sword against the king, but Black Clytus, son of Dropidus, anticipated his blow, struck his arm, and cut it off, sword and all. Now the Greek army was across the river, and the Persian cavalry faced a wall of Macedonian spears. Most turned and fled. The speed and shock of Alexander's attack meant Persia's Greek mercenaries hadn't even had time to join the battle. I don't know why I'm like in best, I'm kind of rooting for the, the Greeks, but I really shouldn't really care. Alexander, in a blood rage, or possibly regarding these Greeks as traitors, ignored their appeals for mercy. Mercy? Mercenaries? Mercy. Please. You're fighting for the other side, right? Rounded on you knew this sides. was coming. And ma the mercenaries were surrounded on all sides and massacred. Alexander had won a great victory. Asia Minor now lay at his mercy. But the Persian Empire was still a land of immense wealth and power. Already, it was mobilizing its vast resources to face him. If Alexander was to conquer this empire and take his place in history, he'd next have to face Darius, king of kings himself. I thought it was scary. Research and artwork for this video comes oh. from Osprey Publishing's extensive range of books on ancient history. Oh, I was wondering that. Awesome video, you guys. Great job. A plus. Might be the best one you guys have recommended so far. Maybe I'm just caught up in the moment. That was a great video. I love learning uh, kind of warfare through a, a geography, a geographical perspective with the maps and um, all that. You can really see the terrain that all the uh, generals had to think about, tacticians had to think about. Great job. Check out these uh, videos up here. Uh, Check them out on my channel, or I might make a uh, outro and uh, maybe put them on that. If I don't, then check them out right here and uh, leave down uh, any recommendations. I'll give you a shout out and I will probably watch the video. I say only probably now because I'm getting much more recommendations than I can react to right away. So, uh, yeah, hit the bell icon, subscribe. See you next time, guys.